this will be the final in this little series of tutorials exploring different tips and tricks used to create a, a little woodland scene as you see at the moment on screen. In previous videos we've covered setting up a multi-layer ecosystem and publishing some parameters to the front end to control the density and distribution of our ecosystems. We also imported uh, an asset which we downloaded from uh, Sketchfab. We tweaked the materials of the trunk itself and added a global ecosystem of mushrooms into the decaying part of the trunk. Today we're going to look at final tweaking of the ecosystems, just uh, exploring the advantages that we've gained by setting up the material we have set up and how to produce a, a dappled effect for the sunlight. So let's get into our scene and see what we've got. So at the moment in the preview you can see a rough idea of what we've got. But if we just do a quick preview render to remind ourselves, um, we can look at the moment as it's uh, revealing itself. I'm seeing that um, the ferns are possibly too dense, but this is a subjective issue that you yourself will have to determine. Um, but if we go back and have a look at our material, remind ourselves what we've gained during our process. On each of the layers we've set up uh, Apache distribution. We've used exactly the same density which we right clicked and we copied and then pasted onto the new layers. We also renamed the layers so that we could uh, identify what we would got more easily. So I'm going to increase the empty patch size and just do a preview and just see what we gain. That's a little bit better for my liking, you know, a little bit more space so we can see the detail on the ground. We'll just do a quick preview render. There we go. We've got a little bit better distribution. I quite like it when a fern populates fairly close to the log. Um, it's a sheltered position, so ferns would possibly grow there. The only thing I'm not seeing at the moment, which I might tweak, is the small plants because I reduced the size of the two ferns. So I may make them a little bit bigger just to improve their visibility in the final render. Let's just do a quick preview again. Remember, a lot of the details we won't see in the preview render anyway because of its graininess. But we can see here that with the small plants are popping through, which is better. So the interesting part of today's uh, tips and trick will be how to get that dappled sunlight effect. Normally, uh, obviously, in reality, that dappled effect would be produced by uh, the trees in the woodland. Um, I'm going to show you a way of getting it without using any trees. And we're going to look at pr putting a, a gel onto the sunlight. So I've selected the sun, and the second icon down on the on the left is the gel button. So I'm going to press that. We're going to add a gel. Now what we can do is we can use a standard light gel if we like. So if I use the clouded gel, and I'm going to edit this gel. I'm going to edit this simply because... What we're looking for is a very strong contrast between black and white. You can see at the moment we're not seeing anything. So I'm going to edit the color map. I'm going to change this to black. OK. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to edit the function because I want to increase that contrast. So we want to look at this particular function here and increase the amplitude. Once we increase the amplitude, we get the, the, the patchiness we're looking for. So the white areas will be transparent. Black areas will be opaque. Let's click to see what we've got. And we'll click on the preview render. It may not. Ah, yes. OK. So you can see that we've got dark and light, but it's far too large. So I'm going to reduce the scale a little bit. We'll make it 10% of what it was, and we'll just do a quick preview render. So this is just using you know, a, a function to produce a gel. 
it's okay. It's not the best solution in my opinion. I like to use an image-based gel. So I'm going to go back to our gel options. I'm going to right-click and I'm going to load a material. So if I go to the history, we can see that we've got some gels that I've used in the past, but I've got a bunch of gels which are produced as a result of a walk in the woods, uh, taking a picture directly up into the canopy of the trees, taking it into Photoshop, um, desaturating and increasing the contrast. So we get areas of white, we get areas of black. Let's use this one for now. Okay, so I've imported it. I'm just going to check its scale and how it's operating. So at the moment, that's a meter square. And you can see we've got a much better effect in the dappled sunlight. So, okay. Okay, let's do a render. Just adding the gel is not sufficient. We need to tweak our atmosphere as well, which we'll look at in a second. And also, I'm going to move the position of the sun. Because if I look on the on the plan view or the top view over here, you can see that the sun is basically pointing in the same direction of the camera. That's not a good solution, so I'm just going to rotate and bring it in closer so we get slightly stronger light. So we get some shadow being cast towards our viewpoint. Again, quick preview render. Okay, so we can basically start to see uh, that dappled effect coming through, but I'm going to further enhance that by tweaking the atmosphere slightly. I'm using one of my standard atmospheres. I don't really want any wind. Let's have a look at the light. Let's make this bigger, or not, as the case may be. Let's try again. So you can see here various settings. What we're particularly looking at is the sky dome lighting gain. What that's going to do is it's going to fill in the detail which are in shade, which is in shade. So if I reduce that down to three, this is going to demand yet another preview render, but this is essential in our in our process. Now we can see we've got a much better result. We've got some much brighter areas, some much darker areas. I'm going to further tweak that by just increasing the light strength just a little bit, 25-26%. And we'll see what we've ended up with. What we're looking for is to increase that contrast between the shadowed areas and the lit areas. One more final tweak. I might increase that and decrease that just a little bit more. This is the final part of any rendering where we are playing and fine tuning and tweaking. Inevitably, we're never gonna get it right first time. I certainly don't. If you do, please <laughs> let me know how you manage it. So for me, that's a much better image. I'm going to do a final quality render and show you a little trick to to check the the quality of the of the image in terms of contrast but we'll let this render out so our render is done and you can see the effect we've uh, obtained this one has a little bit more um, contrast between light and dark than the original image but i kind of like it the little trick i wanted to show you was one that i learned uh, at art school which is concerning contrast. A lecturer once told me the way to, 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 to test an image was to look at it in black and white. So if I reduce the saturation right down, you can see that we've got some very strong contrast between the light areas and the dark areas. It possibly could do with being lit a little bit more um, just to reduce some of this darkness, but a good quality photograph should have some nice strong contrast between light and dark. We can tweak it a little here. We can raise up the brightness a little bit, a little bit more maybe, and then go back to our unsaturated image, or our saturated image, should I say. And you can see now we've got that a little bit better lit. Never underestimate the, the benefit of post work. It's essential to a lot of the images that we do. 
Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Please check us out, uh, obviously, further on YouTube uh, and on Facebook and give us some feedback. We always like to hear from you. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.